it's only got eight controls. Can't we just, you know, let them mess about with it and work it out for themselves? Okay, okay, doing it. What? Greetings, and in this tutorial, we'll look at Transient Processor and what you can do with it. Let's start with the lower visualization controls. I'll switch everything off except the input peaks. The input's green and shows the input signal. No surprises there. In purple, we have the output peaks. Notice how it changes as I adjust the attack control. When both the input and output peaks are active, they overlap to a sort of greyish colour. Depending on whether the input is more or less than the output, the colour fringes will tell you what parts are enhanced in purple or suppressed in green. Finally, we have the transient process line. This shows the gain multiplier of the transient process. That is, positive gain above the line and negative reduction below the line. Now we know what we're looking at, let's consider what Transient Processor actually does. Here I have a kick in Edison. Let's listen to the various parts of the waveform. I'll start at the end and work forward. So up to this point, it's sort of a whoomph sound, the decay of the kick. So it's only this small part at the start, which is the attack transient. So the attack controls the clicky sharp sounds, while the release controls the decay sounds. Let's have a look at that on transient processor. So the attack control is restricted just to the transient itself. Let's look at the release control. So the release region is independent of the attack and you can boost and cut. And that's almost all there is to using Transient Processor, adjusting the attack and or release to achieve the sound you want. The remaining controls are more about tuning the attack and release response to avoid artifacts. So what sort of artifacts might you hear? If you're processing complex audio, such as a complete track, you may hear a roughness or fluttering. This is usually caused by the Transient Process responding to bass frequencies and treating them as transients. So we have two areas of control to counter that. First, the split frequency control, and second, the attack and release shape controls. Let's see how these work. I've set up this project to deliberately cause trouble. We have some percussion, and we have a sub bass drone. By reducing the split frequency cutoff, this allows bass frequencies from the sub to enter the transient process. And with a fast attack and release, we make things worse. So the split frequency control is your first line of defense when dealing with bass artifacts. The other controls are the attack and release shape. I've set it to fast, but if I set it to slow, I would expect to reduce the bass flutter earlier in the split frequency range. And just that change helped quite a bit. So you can view the split frequency and shape controls as two tools to deal with the same problem. Set them by ear. Before we move on, 
let's look at the split frequency in some more detail. If you click this routing icon, you can see a signal flow chart. As we heard, the split frequency bypasses low frequencies from the transient process. These are recombined at the split balance control later, so they're not lost. The split frequency is a pair of high and low pass filters sharing the same cutoff and slope. High pass goes to the transient process and low pass is bypassed. The last control we'll examine is drive. The main purpose is to control attack transients in a way that sounds pleasing. Drive is a soft clipping style wave shaper. To demonstrate, as I increase the attack, notice the peaks are well over zero dB, and so there's active limiting. To tame these peaks, we can add in a little drive. And notice it is just a little, the setting here is quite low. If you don't want to use drive, then you can also use the gain control. The gain is the last stage in the signal path. Well, that's all been very technical and it's clear transient process is great for enhancing drums, but as a teaser for your own experiments, let's look at some other things you can do with it. How about reverb suppression? In this video, we recorded at Dance Fair, Jace Lewis is demonstrating some live drumming. Notice how we can use the release control to significantly tame or enhance the reverberant room sound. useful stuff. Finally, let's have a look at this guitar solo in Umziki's project. <laughs> I noticed in this section, there were some fret noises I liked. I could hear them in the solo, but they were drowned out in the final track. Transient Processor does a great job of bringing those out. With that, I hope you now feel confident about using Transient Processor and you can see that it isn't just for percussion. Why not try it on everything and see what you can do? Until next time, enjoy using Transient Processor.